So the recording has started and we can start reading. So let us, um, the previous para was a very complicated one and a lot of details are there. So I'll do one thing. I'll read the summary of the previous para, which last time we did the whole period. <coughs> it took the whole period. So I'll just read out the summary of the previous one and then we'll start, read today's uh, Okay, so, <clears throat> so what I said is the previous panel. The culminating consummation of the interior yoga is very far away and has to be attained only through many gradations. Okay, there are many, many steps. It is necessarily a step by step graded procedure. The first step is to stop regarding oneself as a doer of act works. We are not the doer. It is that nature which is making us do. <clears throat> okay, so the first step is to stop regarding oneself as a doer of works. One must realize that one is only a minuscule ripple in the vast ocean of cosmic force. We are not even a wave, we are just a ripple, the individual. Initially, it is not the one divine force that rules over us. It is the many cosmic forces that use us as a puppet. But this realization and vision, that is to say the non-doer shape, I am not the doer, however spiritually great and significant, and significant, liberates the soul consciousness. The soul is free, but not the outer nature of body life mind, which continues to act, emote and think ignorantly erroneously and in a petty mode. Even the vision of the cosmic force as a sole doer of all works is not enough to liberate the nature of body life mind. Only the soul gets liberated. Ego of doership may go. Okay, You may feel that I am not doing it, but the ego of the instrument replaces it. Instrumental ego comes in. And the late latter can be even more dangerous than the former or the yogi. Okay? So you feel ego comes in, oh, I am the instrument of God. So he has chosen me. So ego can get, get very much exaggerated. In world history, there are many instances of such men in whom the ego regards itself as the instrument of God and indulges in its own desires considering them to be legitimate divine commands. Okay? <clears throat> These men can achieve even great results and even become diabolical. So I'm quoting now from Sremdo. He is a scourge or he is a bringer of light and healing, a creator of beauty or a messenger of knowledge. Okay? On a lower level, the feeling of being a chosen instrument for the work being done does dominate at the level of the body-mind life, level one. Such men may also declare themselves as instruments of God or fate. In such cases, the egoism is clearly apparent as intruding or housing itself in the being. The magnified ego replaces God whom they think they are serving. This phenomenon is more possible when ambition, pride, desire of greatness sullies the spiritual enthusiasm, makes it dirty. Okay. Therefore, such a simple perception of a greater power moving them is not enough to effect a deliverance from ego. Even if you realize you are not the doer of works, ego may not message you good. This is what he said in the previous one. So now we start reading the next para, this perception and this sense. Okay? So, who will read? Pallavi, Tuesday is your day. <laughs> so, yes, Sangada. Go ahead. This perception. This perception, this sense of a greater power in us or above and moving us is not a hallucination or a megalomania. Those who thus feel and see have a 
larger sight than ordinary men and have advanced a step beyond the limited physical intelligence. But theirs is not the plenary vision or the direct experience. For because they are not clear in mind and aware in the soul, because their awakening is more in the vital parts than into the spiritual substance of self, they cannot be the conscious instruments of the divine or come face to face with the master, but are used through their fallible and imperfect nature. The most they see of the divinity is a fate or a cosmic force, or else they give his name to a limited godhead or worse to a titanic or demoniac power that veils him. Even certain religious founders have erected the image of the god of a, of a sect or a national god or a power of terror and punishment or a newman of satric love and mercy and virtue and seem not to have seen the one and eternal. The divine accepts the image they make of him and does his work in them through their medium, through that medium. But since the one force is felt and acts in their imperfect nature, but more intensely than in others, the motive principle of egoism too can be more intense in them than in others. An exalted rajasic or sattvic ego still holds them and stands between them and the integral truth. Even this is something, a beginning, although far from the true and perfect experience. A much worse thing may befall those who break something of the human bonds, but have not purity and have not the knowledge. But they may become instruments, but not of the divine. Too often using his name, they serve unconsciously his mask and black, contraries the powers of darkness. So he is continuing to discuss people who have gone to the higher level of consciousness and they feel that they are instruments of God, but the ego has not gone yet. So this is the paragraph he is describing their condition. Okay. So this perception, this sense of a greater power in us or above and moving us is not a hallucination or a megalomania. It is real. That means to say, really you are being instrument, you are being used as an instrument. Okay? Their feeling is correct, but their interpretation and thinking that they are special, that is wrong. Okay? So those who thus feel and see have a larger sight than ordinary men. Okay? They are able to see certain things which normal men do not see. Normal men do not see that they are instruments. Normal men should see that they are instruments of nature, not God. Okay? But that also we don't see. Okay. And when you go to the spiritual level, you go to the Brahmic consciousness of the self, then you realize that you are not the doer. But the ego will still linger. That's the whole problem. Those who thus feel and see have a larger sight than ordinary men and have advanced a step beyond the limited physical intelligence. The physical intelligence he is talking of the manas, the physical mind. Okay? So, but theirs is not the plenary vision or the direct experience. So the direct experience is still not there. For because they are not clear in mind and aware in the soul, because their awakening is more in the vital parts than in the spiritual substance of self, they cannot be the conscious instruments of the divine or come face to face with the master, but are used through their fallible and imperfect nature. Fallible, that which can be um, uh, prone to mistakes okay, and error. That's what I mean. The most they see of the divinity is a fate or a cosmic force, or else they give his name to a limited godhead, or worse, to a titanic or demoniac power that veils him. You can go to that extent. Okay. You may even think that God is a... You are saying God, but actually you are believing that it is a, a titan. Okay. Somebody who is punishing you and all. So, the most they see of the divinity is a fate or a cosmic force. Or else they give his name to a limited body 
or worse to a titanic or demonic power that veils it. Even certain religious founders have erected the image of God, of the God, of a sect or a national God, or a power of terror and punishment and human of satiric love and mercy and virtue and seem not to have seen the one and the eternal. So, you, he is talking here of the punishment, he is talking of a priest, okay? Calvin. Calvin was a, he was a Frenchman, but he was in England, I think. Cal, Calvin, okay? So, he, his picture of God was, he was a Christian. His picture of God is that God is a, he punishes the uh, evil and he rewards the good. So, that is the that's not God, okay? It's a, a national God and you're interpreting uh, your own Im image, your own understanding of God in this way. Or a movement of sattvic love and mercy and virtue and seem not to have seen the one and the eternal. So the other one is St. Francis of Assisi, were like that. Okay? St. Francis was in Italy in the 14th or 15th century and he well, he thought of God as one who is a loving and very, very compassionate divine. So that's what Sri Mill mentioning. So, but and these are Newman is what? Pardon? Newman is what? Newman. Oh, Newman. Newman. Newman is a, a spirit or divine power presiding over a theme or a place. Okay. Something, your idea of so a spirit or a divine power presiding over a thing or a place. Okay. Uh, your idea, it may be, and that your idea is um, overriding all your thoughts and your feelings. That's why she is using the word movement. Okay. So it means a, a spirit who is. Particularly in one particular aspect or one or a thing or a place, not everywhere, okay, not universal. Or sattvic love and mercy and virtue and seem not to have seen the one in eternal. The divine accepts the image they make of him and does his work in them through that medium. There you are. So the divine is working. He is working through nature and through the individual and therefore his work in the physical world can never be perfect unless the instrument becomes absolutely transparent and understands the divine. And if you become an instrument of the divine, then you are necessarily pure. Okay? So that's what it means. The divine accepts the image they make of him and does his work in them through that medium. But since one force is felt and acts in the imperfect nature, but more intensely than others, the motive principle of egoism too can be more intense okay, in them than in others. In other words, if you are partially aware of the divine, your egoism need not go. Rather, it can get exaggerated. That's what said this. An exalted Rajasik or Sattvic ego still holds them and stands between them and the interior. Even this is something a beginning. Although it is not the right thing, simply saying at least you're, you are above the average man, so it is not bad. Okay? <laughs> it can be dangerous, but it is better than being an ordinary person. A much worse thing may befall those who break something of the human bonds, but have no not purity and have not the knowledge, for they may become instruments, but not of the divine. Too often, using his name, they serve unconsciously his masks and black contraries, the powers of darkness. As I told you last time, Sri has mentioned that there are many such cases, but I have to still do some research work to find out examples. One example we discussed last time was Rasputin okay, in Russia. Okay? He was a religious person. But he was very, almost like the devil. Okay, the very acts of cruelty and all that. I won't go into details because I'm not sure. Of, but Rasputin was certainly one such case. Okay, 
Rangana, yeah. Hitler could be that? No, Hitler is not spiritual at all. No? He had the sense of uh, that he is the, they are the Aryan ah, race and the... Yeah, so, but he won't... They are the chosen one, right? Yeah, yeah, I think you are right because he is not considered him God, but a, no. a titan. He, even if you accept that, you are somewhere opening yourself at a vital level. Yes, I think Hitler could be a good example. And another example is also Stalin. But whether they had risen to a higher level of consciousness is another matter. But uh, Hitler is a good example because of vital vitality. So I'm just saying very clearly, they are not at the sattvic level, but at the vital level. So Hitler could, because he did see, he, there was a, a being who was guiding him, or rather misguiding him. And you know, we know the story, na, that mother took that form, okay, and told him to attack Russia. That was the beginning of his downfall. Yes. So, <laughs> that was the, uh, that was how he was misled. Okay, so... That story is another story, but it is true. I think, yeah, I think you can. I was doubting about um, Hitler because there was nothing spiritual about him, but he may have had some sense of being a an instrument. Okay, even Hitler, sorry, even Churchill had the feeling that he was being guided. Okay, but he also had a huge ego. It's a well-known thing. He had a huge ego, but he did make a statement in Parliament that he feels that there is a... He was sure of his victory because he said, I can feel a, a guidance from above. He said that. So maybe he said that he's referring to all these, but he has not given examples. I was thinking that he has given more examples from the uh, Christian uh, uh, law, but I'm not sure. Um, Rangata. Uh, yes. Um, here, Shrubindo is saying uh, on exalted Rajasik or Satvik ego. Ah. Uh huh. So, uh, my question is: Yeah, there can, can, uh -uh. So there can there be can there be Satvik uh, asura? It's, can it's there be Satvik asura? Satvik ego is also an ego, and it can be even more dangerous than. The vital ego. So even that, you feel yourself to be a very great person, a sattvic ego. <laughs> there is a clarity in the mind, but the ego does not disappear. So sattvic ego can go diabolic then? I, I think I know what you are saying, whether the sattvic ego can also be asuric. That's what you are asking, no? Huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, I'm not sure of that. I'm not sure. A sattvic ego, can it also... I think it's possible. The way Srimad is described here, you can get misled very clearly. So, it can be. But uh, Ranga, the Asura is from the vital world, no? And mental, not the sattvic. Quick world, right? No, I think this one day we have discussed because Tarika had asked that question, I remember, and I checked up. There are three powers, Asuric power. The lowest is the Pishacha. The Pishacha mm -hmm. is at the subtle physical level. They are yes. elemental beings. Okay. Then at the vital level, they are called um, what are they called? Rakshasas. Mm. And asuras are at the mental level. Mm -hmm. But above the mind, there are no asuric forces. Mm -hmm. There are no asuric forces above the mind. So mm -hmm. that's it. The asuras, mental level, rakshasas at the vital level, and the ishachas. Yeah, ishachas at the subtle physical level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can go to the next one. Our nature must house the cosmic force. So, who will read? Tarika, you come very rarely. So, you come on Tuesdays and sometimes Fridays and also Saturdays. 
Yeah. So you can read if you have the text. Yeah, I have the text. Go ahead, read. Our nature. Our nature must house the cosmic force, but not in its lower aspect on, or in its rajasic or sattvic movement. Uh -huh. It must serve the universal will, but in the light of a greater liberating knowledge. There must be no egoism of any kind in the attitude of the instrument. Even when we are fully conscious of the greatness of the force within us, every man is knowingly or, or unknowingly the instrument of a universal power. And apart from the inner presence, there is no such essential difference between one action and another. One kind of instrumentation and another as would warrant the folly of an egoistic pride. The difference between knowledge and ignorance is a grace of the spirit. The breath of divine power blows where it lists and fills today one and today one and tomorrow another with the word or the puissance. If the potter shapes one pot more perfectly than another, the merit lie, lies not in the vessel, but the maker. The attitude of our mind must not be, this is my strength, or behold God's power in me, but rather a divine power works in this mind and body, and it is the same that works in all men and in the animal, in the plant and in the metal, in conscious and living things and in things appearing to be inconscient and inanimate. This large view of the one working in all and of the whole world as the equal instrument of a divine action and gradual self-expression, if it becomes our entire experience, will help to eliminate all rajasic egoism out of us and even the sattvic ego sense will begin to pass away from our nature. Okay, so he explained very clearly, he is saying that the divine force is working from the highest level, it is coming down into the second level and entering into the third level. And by the time it comes down to the third level, it becomes very diluted and very, very weak. So, at our level, it is true that the divine is working in us, but not directly, through nature. First he works through nature, and nature is working in us. But ultimately, if you see the origin, it's a divine force. So, when we think that we are doing things at the physical level, it's actually the divine will, but it is distorted. It is completely weakened. And we think that the ego thinks that I am doing it. Okay? So, he... Um, it uh, claims the action that is doing as his own, but it is not his own. Okay? So, they were saying, they explain. And there are many grades in this. Our now simply saying what the attitude should be and not what the attitude should not be. He is giving an example. Our nature must house the cosmic force, but not in its lower aspect or in its rajasic or sattvic movement. So, rajasic and sattvic movement, so if you do that, then the possibility of your going astray is certainly there. Uh, Sunki's question was whether if you have the sattvic movement also, whether you can become open to asuric forces. So, asuric forces, wrong forces definitely, but whether it's asuric force, that is not very clear. I think it could be. Okay. As you said just now, there are three levels, Asuric, Rakshasic, and Pishachic. <laughs> so, we could certainly be um, instrumental of wrong forces. Mother has given very interesting examples where even a, a gambler, okay, he was being guided by very elemental forces. And whenever he was gambling, he was going on willing, winning, winning. So, he believed that he is being guided by some superior power. But this made him very confident and he went on, went on winning. Finally, the, this force which was guiding, or rather misguiding him, told him to put all his money in one transaction. And then 
he lost everything he had made. So this is the pishachic forces that can work. I know one person who used to forecast things. Okay, he was here long ago. He was a man from the north. He was not an astronomer. He came here, and there were many people who went to him for readings, their nature and the future and all that. And this man was able to tell the future or tell the characteristics only when he was working in a, a very very peculiar place. Okay, a very low nature. Suppose in a bar, he used to go to a bar and say, "In that." Uh, Atmosphere, I can tell you. So very clearly, it's a vital force that he is opening to. Because if he was in a ashram house, he says, "Now I can't tell you." Okay, I remember this very clearly. Okay, and many people had gone to him, but he used to always say that my reading is best when I'm in a in a bar or even worse. Okay, a house of ill repute. There I can tell you because he used to open himself to the vital forces. It's very interesting. He could not say anything when he was in a an ashram house, a, a house belonging to an ashram. Okay, so this is again God's advice saying here: you should not open yourself to vital forces, and even satvic forces can mislead you. Okay, so <clears throat> not in its lower aspect, or in its rajasic or satvic. It must serve the universal will. But in the light of a greater liberating knowledge, okay? it must be at the higher level, but not at the lower level. There must be no egoism of any kind in the attitude of the instrument, even when we are fully conscious of the greatness of the force within us. If the ego is there, then you are being misguided. Every man is knowingly or unknowingly the instrument of a universal power. And apart from the inner presence, there is no such essential difference between one action and another, one kind of instrumentation and another, as would warrant the folly of an egoistic pride. Even we are being guided in our ignorance; we are being guided by the divine will, but in a very weakened condition, and it is getting distorted. The divine will is getting distorted in you because of your. Impure vital and the impure physical also. Okay, so I am saying very clearly, everybody is being guided by higher forces without their knowledge. Every man is knowingly or unknowingly the instrument of a universal power, and apart from the inner presence, inner presence is the psychic being. If that is there, then you are guided correctly. If it is not there, then there is no such essential difference. But in one action and another, one kind of instrumentation or another, as would warrant the folly of an egoistic pride. So, egoistic pride definitely it is stupid at the lowest level, and it is dangerous at the higher level. And that also is stupid, but it can be very dangerous for you. The difference between knowledge and ignorance is a grace of the spirit. The breath of divine power blows where it lists and fills today one and tomorrow another with the word or the puissance. The word represents knowledge, and the puissance represents power. Okay, so it can enter into you and give you knowledge, or it can give you power if you are ready for it. This, this is a divine power blows where it lists and fills today. List means. It leans towards those who are power. The divine power will give you either knowledge or a little bit of their own power. But if you are not open, then that power gets distorted, and the knowledge becomes ignorance. It is trying to come in. So Ranga, yeah, Ranga, the yeah. this the, there is the divine power. There is the divine power, but the demoniac power is what we create. No, that's right. More or less, you can say that you are creating. No, that. there is not. Huh. No, it is not like power yes, is sir. all pervading. That is the supreme power. The demoniac yeah. power is what we create. It is not all over like yeah. like the divine power. Yeah, but the problem is when you are creating that a distorted divine power, 
then you open yourself to the lower forces. Then the lower Those forces, forces are also are created by us, no? It's not yes. the divine who has created it. No, no, no. The, what you're saying is right. The divine power is coming and enters into you, but since you are impure, okay? Yes. You yes. We are not receiving the divine power in its proper form. Okay? Yes. So when you are distorting that and thinking that you are doing, the mm -hmm. other powers, if you are open, they can enter into you and use you. That's the thing. So there okay. is a demonic power which is all pervading like the divine power. Yes, there are powers at the lower level, no doubt. Okay. These Asuri forces do exist. They do exist. For instance, very clearly, in the in nature, there are small, small creatures, elves, gnomes, and all these. Even asuras are there. Okay? There are actually but, rakshas also yeah. are there. But They're these powers, yeah. but these but not above, not above the mind. Okay. They are there in the lower creation. Rangada. Level one, they are there. Rangada. Level, huh? No, these powers, the Asuric powers are also created by the divine only, no? Yes, that's true. That is true. And they also have a function. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they have a function. And what is that function? They find fault with you. And then they, if your attitude is correct, you become aware of the fault. And then you take advantage of that being pointed out. And you progress even more. So they, it's like a goal, you know? Uh, when a driver is sitting behind a bullock cart, he has got a stick and he goes on poking the, <laughs> the bulls to encourage them to go faster. So the Asuric forces are like that. They help you to go faster and more correctly on the path. They have this function. They, in fact, Sri Ramana used the word Vedic restrainers. In the, I think it's in the Eshan of the Gita. He uses the word Vedic restrainers. Okay. Yeah. They have a function in the world. Whatever the Tata. demand. Ah, yes, tell me. Tata, uh, yes. From this point of view, uh, how can uh, how can we uh, explain about the avatar Sri Ramachandra? Sri Ramachandra, uh, was, uh, what we have uh, got the knowledge about Sri Ramachandra, that he was having that sattvic uh, sense uh, uh, of the avatar. And uh, what Sri Krishna was guiding Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, that uh, do the work without any egoistic pride. It, in that uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita, we got this knowledge. And uh, how can yeah, we describe uh, Sri Ramachandra in this aspect? Please elaborate that. Right? Please tell mm -hmm. a little bit. I think she has lost the connection. Ha, Dada. Hello. Ah, tell me. Hello. Hello. Yes, she is. Oh, Dada, uh, I, I am asking, uh, in this context, how can we uh, explain about the uh, functioning of, of the avatar Sri Ramachandra? Sri Ramachandra, uh, what, he was having that sattvic sense. I think he was that avatar who was uh, uh, doing his functioning in the earth, on the earth. Uh, on the highest level of the mind, not the higher mind, but the highest level of the mind, what yes. Sri Aurobindo has written in a letter. Uh, yes. And in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, we have got the knowledge that uh, Sri Krishna uh, uh, advised Arjuna that do the art, but without any egoistic pride. It's not mine, but it has to be a spiritual mission. Okay, so, so that is through an experience only, no, Rangada? Yes, exactly. Not spiritual understanding. Experience. Spiritual experience, yes. Okay, it's 8.40. I'm closing now. So, uh, Arjuna did, did, did not come because it's a birthday. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. Au revoir, everybody. Au revoir, Yash. Have a nice day. Au revoir, Tata. Bonjour. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rangata.